Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we are going to take a look at the Vox AC style amplifier. We're going to do kind of a 10,000 foot flyover and try to understand what are some of the identifiable circuit characteristics that make a Vox amp sound the way that it does. Now, with any amplifier circuit, there is very much, uh, it's a culmination of all of its parts. So it's really the whole thing, all of these individual components working together as a unit, and almost all of them have some impact. Uh, but what I'm going to try to do is kind of identify, in my opinion, from reviewing this, these Vox circuits and comparing it with several other circuits from Fender or Marshall or Mesa or Dr. Z or on and on, whoever else, uh, what makes these amps kind of unique or what are some of their most identifiable characteristics. Also, I'm reviewing a couple of different schematics that I've got open here. The first is, this is an old Vox AC15 uh, circuit. Now, and then this is um, an, a Vox AC30 schematic that was drawn, I think, by a user. Uh, that represents more of like the six input AC30. And then this one is the Hoffman AC30. Doesn't have any tremolo but I think is pretty clear to read. Um, there are a lot of different Vox amps and a lot of different kind of permutations. So I'm not going to go into that, but I want to kind of highlight what are some of the commonalities that you'll see or maybe some of the um, most identifiable characteristics. So let's dive in. This is the Vox AC15. I think the first thing that you would notice is almost all the AC style amps have a tube rectifier. Now, tube rectifier would be opposed to a solid state rectifier. There are different types of tube rectifiers. This is this one has the EZ81, uh, kind of a moderate voltage drop. You're going to have some inefficiency compared to a solid state rectifier, but overall the feel and response of the amp is going to be changed just slightly compared to solid state. It's going to have a little bit of a softer, slower response, a little bit more squish possibly, not quite as immediate and fast under the fingers. Uh, next, Vox AC amps are very well known for having EL84s or 6BQ5 power tubes. The our next defining characteristic is that they are in cathode bias. Uh, some of the older models, now, now I guess before I move on, the AC15 is going to have a pair of EL84s at 15 watts. The AC30 is going to have four, a quartet at 30 watts. Now the AC30, what they do is they have um, two pairs. So basically, if the AC15 has one and then a second, you've got you know you've got your push pull right. So the signal has been phase inverted, and it's going to split into its two sections. So what the AC30 would do is it would add another tube right here, so that you would run it in parallel, um, and then and then the fourth one would be down here. So these these two guys right here would be like a little tag team compared to these two running as, a, as well. So um, just a subtle difference between the AC30 and the AC15, really from a circuit perspective, fairly straightforward. But the cathode bias is definitely a defining characteristic of these amps. Uh, I think the AC30 with its four cathode bias tubes is probably the highest power cathode bias amp that I'm aware of. Tend to be see cathode bias in more single ended amps or like the deluxe or the the 5e3 tweed deluxe style amps a little bit lower um wattage lower powered amplifiers and these el84 tubes are definitely lower power so they kind of fit with that um but you know running them running four of them in the ac30 obviously is going to max that out um now this has a 130 ohm 5 watt resistor because it is shared amongst the two that is kind of a characteristic of more of the vintage style. I've seen more modern ones where that put an individual bias resistor on each power tube. Both ways are really functionally similar. But the biggest characteristic here, though, is we're not running a fixed bias. We're running in cathode bias, which I think is going to give it a little bit more of kind of that um, raw, thinking a little bit more mid-range uh, type of tone and in the way that the bias is going to work. Uh, definitely going to lend itself though it's a simple design, it's a robust design that would work well, but definitely a characteristic of the Vox amps. 
Next, I want to highlight here on the output transformer, there is no negative feedback going back into the amplifier at all. Uh, negative feedback is common in a lot of amp circuits. It would Anytime you add negative feedback, what you're going to do is you're going to increase headroom, you're going to delay the onset of breakup and distortion, and you're going to increase uh, more of a flatter frequency response, so less of a mid-range poke, more bass, more treble, more flatness. So maybe more of a hi-fi type sound. But then once it does start to distort, the distortion comes on faster. So with the Vox amp, having no negative feedback, you have the opposite characteristics. More mid-range, more of a gradual onset of distortion, and I think a, definitely a, a defining characteristic of this amp. Uh, you know, it sounds, it, in, you know, these Vox AC amps are, are known to sound good from clean to medium gain, even to a classic rock tone, and I think um, some of that is definitely characteristic of its negative feedback. That's definitely a really defining characteristic of an amp. And then that's going to help with these EL84s and, and, and with the type of signature tone that they provide. Um, next, we see a long tail pair phase inverter. That's these two tubes right here. So, uh, a, honestly, a long tail pair is the most common type of phase inverter that you would see. Definitely not unique to the Vox style amp, but critical to how its circuit designs. It's going to add a gain stage to each of the two push pulse uh, paths. And it's also going to help in, invert the signals. But um, overall, a, a very commonly used and, and definitely well, well used uh, type of phase inverter. So not, you, not, not something that maybe separates this amp from some of its peers, but a key part of the sound as a whole. Next, we come to the preamp. Now the Vox amps, the AC amps, tend to vary quite a bit in the different preamps. I've seen AC30s that have up to six inputs. Um, I've also seen different input tubes, but I think um, what I want to do actually is take a look at this circuit. I think this presentation gives us the core basics that we want to pay attention to. Um, so this one has two channels. It has a normal channel and then a top boost channel. Now this amp does not have any tremolo, which is very commonly, you can see on this AC15, it has a, a vibrato tremolo channel. Uh, which is, you know, this is the tremolo circuit in here, in this area. Uh, so definitely missing out on that. But I think what I want to focus more on is the preamp voicing of these two channels. Um, so first of all, having two parallel inputs, right? You have, you could plug into the normal channel and get a certain type of voicing that is going to be very distinct from this top boost channel. And then they run in parallel to one another, right? The top boost is going to come uh, kind of along this path and then join here at the phase inverter, whereas the normal channel is going to take this path before it joins. Now, um, the main thing to note of distinction here, the normal channel is about as stripped down, bare bones, raw, straightforward tube tone as you can have. Uh, it has, you know, this is just a single gain stage 12x7 triode into a volume channel. It, and it is, everything is just super standard and super straightforward. There's no tone filtering. This is just plug and play, raw, ready to go. The top boost channel, however, I think is probably a little bit more signature for the Vox tone, in my opinion. I, I, I am kind of of the opinion that the top boost channel is maybe where the quote unquote magic is at in most Vox amps. So to identify with this presentation, um, this is, and again, some of this is unique to how Hoffman has done it, but I think that it is something you would see in a lot of places. So you've got a first triode gain stage. Okay, so far so good. Then you have a volume that, and, and also you've got a, a, a coupling cap here at 500 picofarad. And the volume control has a uh, bright cap or a treble bypass on it. So everything in here is going to cut bass and increase treble frequencies. Then it goes into a uh, cathode follower. So you've got a single gain stage here into the cathode follower. So this, this triode is not increasing the gain of the signal, but it's actually changing the impedance so that it drives into this tone stack. And this tone stack is a typical treble mid-bass 
tone stack well, without mid, so just treble and bass. But um, it is very identifiable in, in line with what you would see from a Fender or Marshall. Now the values that are used here, this 100K slope resistor is a little higher, uh, but uh, you know, 47 picofarad, not super out of line. Um, but you know, the the values here, one meg treble, one meg bass, 10K mid, all these values in combination provide that kind of signature, uh, you know, it, top boost, voxy sound. It's chimey because there's a lot of treble that's being let through both both here at this coupling stage and here in the tone stack definitely more of a treble favored tone stack combine that with um, fours and no negative feedback that's really i think where you're going to get a lot of that those upper mid-range frequencies that are being pronounced uh, so as a whole i really definitely think that this preamp configuration is definitely uh, a very identifiable part of it now another thing though that i want to highlight that the normal channel of this old AC-15 actually has a little bit of a different um, presentation because its normal channel is actually using an EF-86, which is actually a pentode, different than a 12AX7. It's going to have very different kind of uh, tone and feel compared to a 12AX7, very characteristic. Uh, and definitely is going to add, I think, to some of the Vox sound. And that's actually running here into a brilliance capacitor switch, which basically just adds um, uh, another capacitor in series with this coupling cap to really, again, filter out and make sure that the high frequencies are getting through in a very powerful way. So, you know, as a whole, um, then the last thing I want to mention is right here, this top cut or maybe presence control. Um, let's see if some of our other circuits have it. You know, right here. This one's got it right here. So this is an interesting tone control. So especially when you have the preamp side of it that is very kind of more simplified and straightforward, having this extra top cut control, what this does is it, because this is after the phase inverter, this is very late in the circuit. So all of the gain staging has already pretty much been completed. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the everything that's been preamplified and phase inverted, and it's going to allow, depending on how you set the pot, for this, based upon the value of this capacitor, it's a very, very low value, 0 0.005 microfarad. So that means that only very high frequencies are going to be allowed to pass. And by passing, they're coming. some of it's coming from this side of the phase inverter, and then the high frequencies, really high frequencies, are going this way. The bulk of the signal is going this way to the output tube. Same thing over here. Here's our other side of our phase inverter. Same junction point. And it's going to look based on the resistor and it's going to say, okay, some of the super high frequencies are going to go here where the meat of the signal is going to go this way. And right here you have a collision where the really high frequencies are going to cancel one another because they're out of phase. They're after the phase inverter. And so a very, um, basically it's going to, as you increase as you decrease the amount of resistance, you're reducing treble. So it's going to make the amp darker. So, you know, even though there's a lot of treble that's being let through earlier in, this, in the circuit, this is a way to kind of tame that here on the back end. So, in my opinion, those are the most identifiable features of a Vox AC style amp. Uh, if you are curious about amp design philosophy, I hope this is enlightening. If you have any questions or comments, down below, please let me know, and I'd love to hear from you guys. I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.